welcome to We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. And my name is Ed. And this is a quick start on the kickstart. And what we do in a quick start on the kickstart is sometimes people are running campaigns and they're running campaigns just now. So rather than us do a big lead up to what's happening, we actually catch them in the middle of the campaign to find out how the campaign's going. And this is coinciding with the fact that the person that is on tonight is a Mr. Ed Jowett, who was on a little while ago, who is from Shades of Vengeance. So that makes him a repeat offender. So, Oh no, I'm a repeat <laughs> offender, I'm sorry. Next time I'll tell you in advance when I'm launching a Kickstarter and we can do this properly. What do you say? It's good to have you back on. It's really good to have you back on. Are you well? Uh, I'm great, and it's great to be back uh, talking to you again, Richard, on, on We're Not Wizards. Hello to everyone who's listening. Hello to everybody who's listening as well. Um, the reason that we're doing this is because, as we said there's before, there's simply still not enough podcasts out there about board games. So we like to put out these episodes where we catch up with the likes of Ed and find out what he has been up to, especially if he's in the middle of his current Kickstarter campaign. You been busy today, though? Oh yeah, um, I did. A, I did the Crystal Maze in London today. It was great fun. Uh, <laughs> strongly recommend it, particularly if you were ever a fan of the TV series. So, do, what fun. were you, what were you a bit of a mystery man? Are you a bit physical? Are you a bit, uh, bit mental? I ended up getting put in both mystery trials. Um, okay. <laughs> and and the first one I was quite good at, and then yeah. the second one I was totally useless at because you had to put the signs up for names of pubs and I don't drink. So <laughs> <laughs> I was probably the worst possible choice. But uh, I was also the team vice captain and oh, really? uh, you know we we worked really well together as a team and we didn't win but uh, we did pretty well. Do you go into the dome at the end and try and grab yep. all the stuff to you? Yeah, yeah, you do that. Um and the oh, crystals goodness. they unlike in the TV series they only give you 5 seconds. But we had 10 crystals which is 50 seconds in the dome and I'll tell you what that fifty seconds seems to last forever. <laughs> I'm I'm not kidding. It's amazing. Did you just did you end up just like taking did you end up getting like tuckered out halfway through and say, Guys, guys, I need five seconds just to, to take a bit of a <laughs> It wasn't quite that bad breather. in the dome, but I'll tell you what, there were people who came out of the physical challenge and were like Ugh! <laughs> <laughs> Um last time you were on, we were talking about your Previous Kickstarter to Kickstarter campaign, I'll get my teeth in, and um, this time you're back again to talk about your Kickstarter campaign. But you've had a Kickstarter campaign in the middle. That's also true. So, what Kickstarter campaign was that about, Ed? So, um, that one was a, an expansion for my card game, Champion of Earth, mm-hmm. and um, it went very well. We unlocked one expansion for robots and cyborgs. Oh, cool, okay. And it's actually already been fulfilled, so um, all the backers already have their reward. Yeah. Um, which uh, which which I was very pleased with, you know, I and mean, we managed to get that done very quickly. And if any of your listeners are based in England, or are visiting England uh, at the end of October for MCM Comic Con yeah. in London, um, I will actually have copies of uh, Champion of Earth's uh, well, Champion of Earth itself, also the expansion, and also the Kickstarter exclusive expansion. Ooh. I printed 50 more, all and right. I didn't get rid of them all on the Kickstarter, so I'll have a couple of leftovers. We had we had uh, about 20 left last time at MCM, and they're all gone on the Friday. So um, are you, you going to sign these? I am willing to sign these at MCM th- if people want me to sign them. Absolutely. Th- so if you want to come along for your signed copy... Then come along on that day to MCN uh, and twenty seventh to twenty ninth of October. There you go. So come along. Whereabouts in London is it, Ed? Uh, it is in the Excel Centre in in East London. Fantastic. I don't even know what line that's on because I am not from London. Uh, it's on the DLR. Oh, there you go then. So <laughs> it's just just not just like a guy that runs Kickstarter. It could, be, it could potentially be a travel guide around the streets <laughs> of London if, if it so happens. Is that south of the river? Uh, you know what? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I'd failed. guess at north of the river, <laughs> but That's it's right. it's like right next to a bridge. All right, okay. And I'm not sure which way's north at that bridge. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> well, tell you what, you can find that out, and then we can always record an amendment to this episode. No, we're I, not I'm glad to hear it because I would hate to humiliate <laughs> myself. Well, you're meant you're a repeat offender, so you're allowed to come back and cause as much offending as possible. Um, but so, yeah, I think re- I think I remember you talking about running the the campaign um, for Champion of Earth and saying that you were pretty much ready to go and you were already organised. And I think I was suitably impressed at the time. You have now got a new Kickstarter out, so we're just gonna we're just gonna go live, <laughs> gonna go live to Kickstarter just now. And um, it's uh, you got eleven days to go. I have eleven days to go. Ninety three backers, and we're just backers. a shade under seventeen hundred pounds so with a two thousand uh, pound stretch goal. Uh, so uh, two thousand pound fund goal, rather. <laughs> so how's things going so far? Are you? Um, I'm I'm pretty happy. Um, so Irabalam um, is an idea that I had a little while ago. And um, as has happened a few times this year, Kickstarter launched something that basically made it irresistible to me to run the campaign as part of one of their sort of um, events. Oh, right, okay. Um, So, Era Hitman, I think I spoke last time I was on about how I'd done a a really short uh, two-week Kickstarter with just the one reward. Yeah. Um... And uh, that was one of their events. And once again, Irabalam is one of their events. So um, I don't know if you know, um, but uh, we have recently passed the point which was the 40th anniversary of the launch of Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. I did not. I must admit, Mr. Joe, I did not know that. Um, Well, we did. And um, in order to uh, sort of celebrate that, Kickstarter decided they were going to do a thing called uh, Projects of Earth. All right. And uh, there are some fantastic projects up there. Um, they uh, they made a Facebook group, and uh, a whole bunch of us have joined in. And I've seen many of the other projects, and a lot of them are brilliant. Um, obviously, none of them are as good as mine. Of course, <laughs> goes without saying. <laughs> just, uh, I didn't even want to. Dr- I wasn't even <laughs> going to be controversial there, and even just announce that. You know, I just I think everybody knows. <laughs> um, however, um, you know, it, it, it's all about. Um, the, the basis of uh, Projects of Earth is projects inspired by the Voyager probes in general, space exploration, um, and that kind of theme. And a lot of people have done things like, um, you know, very sort of uh, uplifting, sort of Earth is brilliant, humanity's great, you know, here's a new golden record soundtrack, uh, this kind of stuff. And um, me being me, uh, I've gone and I've thought, uh, well, what would happen if a probe arrived at an alien planet, yeah. crash landed on their power supply, you know, their power plant, yeah. which blew up, caused a cataclysmic event, and meant that the aliens actually had to leave their world and decided to look for revenge against Earth? Sounds like EastEnders. <laughs> So, um, what I, you know, the story of this game is around uh, being human. Yeah. uh, While the aliens are, in fact, invading uh, your home system, which is not our home system. It's a a separate one um, with with Balam uh, being the main human colony that remains. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you are a pilot of a one-man fighter who will go with a squad of other pilots to explore the solar system, Mm -hmm. uh, to engage the enemy, and uh, to ensure that humanity endures. Is it based around your kind of your normal kind of era system? I mean, how okay? So how do you deal with um, if the exploration stuff, the spaceship type stuff? How are you kind of dealing with that? So what I've done, um, yes, it's it's it runs on the era D10 rule set. Um, it's completely compatible with the other games, and in particular, I've had a lot of interest around Era the Consortium and Era Balam and how compatible they are. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously, uh, now I should say, I am talking on the Era D10 rule set here, because this game is coming out not only on the Era D10 rule set, but also on Fate and on Savage Worlds. Um, I, I went out and I got, uh, I got a gaming license for Savage Worlds, All right. and I'm using the open gaming license for Fate. Mm-hmm. Um, because I wanted to, uh, because I wanted to sort of give that a go, um, sort of see if that helped get more people, um, 
sort of interested in the game. Um, I think the idea is a really interesting one. And it's all based around the concept that the pilot and the fighter together are one complete character. One without the other is nothing. Um, oh, okay. So um, all of your physical stats uh, yeah. in this game, your physical attributes, um, which are exactly the same as in Era of the Consortium or Era Survival or Era Hitman, um, strength, uh, dexterity... Uh, and stamina, those are all statistics of your fighter, not of you. Mm. You, the pilot. Um, And then the mental component, uh, you know, the intelligence, the wits, um, those are obviously of the pilot. Uh So, you know, only together do you have a complete character sheet. Yeah. And, you know, if a pilot were to be hit by any of the weapons that we're talking about in this game, there'd be vaporized most likely um there certainly wouldn't be much left so you know if you happen to be outside and and the gm decides that you got shot um you know you you you're rerolling i'm afraid uh because the ship is is going to be dead in space with no pilot has anyone um, done has anyone else done anything like this before because i i can't say I've so i'm i'm this. i'm a little hesitant to to say no yeah. But um, because, you know, I, I can't claim that I know absolutely everything about everything. But um, I've spoken to a few other people about this, uh, yeah. some of whom are industry experts, and they've never heard of anything quite like it. I like the idea then. Is in t- Does this mean that um, are you able to upgrade, as you upgrade your ship, you're upgrading your physical That's kind exactly. of stars? Yeah. yeah. Does so, that... you know, you upgrade your armor and that increases oh. your ship's health, for example. Does this also mean that as a pilot you can decide to be almost like a glass cannon? Absolutely. A, there are yeah. there are five different sort of modules that you can add to your ship. Hmm. Um and uh you know some of them are sort of defensive. That they're almost a little bit like classes in uh you know in a role playing game. The difference being um, sorry, I should say, they're almost a little bit like classes in a class-based role-playing game. The difference yeah. being that you can actually switch them at any time because they're hardware. So, um, you can have a, a, a weapon that, uh, sorry, a module that just has lines of short-range weapons. Yeah. That if, any, if you get close enough to anything, you will pulverize them, but you have to get really, really close. Hmm. Equally, if you're looking at the main image on the Kickstarter there, um, there's a giant laser cannon that you can see coming from the bottom right of the image going to the center. You yeah. can just have this giant laser cannon, which can only fire once every two turns. And yeah, you're very much more a glass cannon. You can have a um, like a salvage drone, that uh, or a set of salvage drones, I should say, um, that you can launch that will actually repair your ship or help you with salvage or even try and damage enemy ships. You know, like trying to take them apart. Um, very vulnerable to enemy fire, but also can be very effective in the in the right situations. Um, there are five in all. Uh, the other two are you can get a mine layer, um, and you can get a. Uh, a scout module which um, renders you undetectable. Uh, I, I, I took a bit of a steer off uh, Mass Effect for the uh, scout module. It yeah. uh, absorbs all of your heat and in heat sinks. And as time goes on, you know, if you wait too long, then you start taking damage. Ah, right. Okay. So, was <clears throat> is that some of your influences? I mean, have you looked at other other type of kind of space exploration? I mean, elite kind of. Springs elite dangerous to me, to me. Yeah. yeah um yeah. certainly uh yeah i mean elite dangerous was one but more i focused on the sort of story driven perspective of um you know uh things like luke skywalker and his x-wing uh-huh. right or um wash and uh serenity oh uh, yeah from, from firefly um oh, and don't you know, w- don't say wash from serenity <laughs> you'll make me cry i'm sorry um <laughs> It sort of gets you right here, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but um, you know th- those those pilots, you know, they're they're so integral to the ship, and mm. the ship is so integral to them when they're doing those things. And and you know, I'm more talking sort of Luke from from Star Wars rather than uh, rather than Empire or, or Return of the Jedi when he's a bit more useful as a person. <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> you're not judging; you're just saying. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just saying that when people were shooting at him in A New Hope, he ran. 
Yeah, I suppose that's right. Right. Actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. In- indeed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's going to be this screaming and the wailing <laughs> and the gnashing of teeth tonight. You know, the whole repeat offender thing. That's you're just living up to this, aren't you? <laughs> I'm doing my best. You are doing so. You know, uh, I, yeah. I looked at these. Uh, looked at these themes, and actually, what someone else pointed out to me, one of the playtesters pointed out to me, um, that it's a little bit like, um, almost like a western sort of a man and his horse. Yeah. Um, it's sort of almost got that feel to it as well. You know, and I really like that thought because it gives you the chance to sort of have the you know the wanderer sort yeah. of background for your character if that's what you want to play. Yeah, the fi- firefly kind of springs to mind a bit kind of going from place to place but can you get I take it this means that in terms of um, like a group that you're almost kind of you can probably run a quite easily successful kind of 8 10 player group if everybody has their own little kind of ship in, in principle, like yeah, and and not only that, you can actually have unique characters because you know maybe maybe one of them chooses to have a tail gun, mm. for example, you know which, which is one of the bonuses you can pick up, um, and then you know the others don't have that, but that person can cover everyone while everyone's running away, you know. Mm. So you can, yeah, I mean, you can actually get large groups to have a nice wide range of capabilities, and then equally, depending on the difficulty of the scenario, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> And then equally, depending on the difficulty of the scenario that the GM sets, mm. you can easily play with just two or three people and no problem. You know, I've run I've run playtests with both small groups and large groups. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Very successfully, to be honest. How many um how many scenarios do you kind of get with with the kind of the Kickstarter itself then? So with the Kickstarter itself, um Initially, with the rulebook itself, you get no extra scenarios. Mm-hmm. Um, it gives you everything that you need to run a game, but uh, it's one of our pocket range, so it's deliberately a small, sort of relatively cheap book. I'm sure that uh, looking at sort of looking at the prices and getting a getting a book for five pounds, you're not expecting it to be a 300 page monster. No, no. Um, so it's a smaller book. Um, it contains um, everything that you need to play. It contains details about all of the planets you can visit. Um, but uh, it doesn't contain a huge amount in terms of campaigns. Mm-hmm. Uh, the s- campaigns uh, are being offered as stretch goals. So if we can make some stretch goals, uh, we have some fantastic writers who've pitched in. Um, we've got uh, we've got Darren Pierce, um, who's recently uh, been working on the Judge Dread RPG. All right. Okay. Um, he's uh, he's he said yeah he'd love to um, work with us. Uh, and and mission pack one is actually by him, even though it says it's a combat focused session by me. That's actually a copy and paste error that really needs fixing. Um, <laughs> oops. Um, uh, but yeah, no. Um, Darren's going to be writing uh, writing an entire mission pack. He's laid out what's going to happen in this mission pack, and I can't tell you too much. But um, what I can say is that uh, in the entire solar system, there is only one large sort of capital ship, the alien mothership. Mm-hmm. Um, humans had all their fleet destroyed when the when the aliens did the surprise attack in the first place, and now they're kind of um, just working with fighters. And um, this mission pack is going to be around uh, stopping the aliens from building a second capital ship. All right. Okay. So yeah, uh, really, fate of the solar system stuff. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Are you um, allowing it to be? Um, is it going to be quite serious, or is that have you kind of played it so it's kind of open in terms of how people are able to play it? I mean, could you effectively have Galaxy Quest kind of going on here? Um, oh, I, I think Galaxy Quest going on here would be brilliant. And um, my group are really not terribly serious. Um, <laughs> I, I every time someone asks me this kind of question, I, I think back to um, the high fantasy game we did, mm. where um, you know they rocked up to a, a giant wall um, of a fort, and uh, so the guard yells down, "Hey, are you skeletons?" <laughs> and uh, someone yells back, "Yes." So you know, obviously the guards sort of start firing arrows desperately, frantically, <laughs> yeah. without thinking that you know probably skeletons <laughs> don't talk very much. Um, <laughs> And then, uh, you know, after the hail of arrows was over, once it was the next combat round, 
um, the the uh, what one of the party sort of piped up and said, "We're sorry, we won't be skeletons anymore." <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh. my my group are not the most serious in the universe. No. Um, uh, so I always like to leave it very open. You know, you can, mm. you can the the setting itself is relatively serious. Yeah. But how seriously the players take it is really down to the players and the GM and the characters themselves. Because, I mean, and Firefly is a brilliant example, actually, yeah. of an example where the stuff going on is super serious. No one's taking it seriously. You know, no, none of none of that crew are actually paying attention to the fact that, yes, they are actually in a gunfight. Yeah. They are getting shot. It's only yeah. armor that's saving their lives. Yeah. You know, if the if the shot had been, you know, for, I'm thinking the first episode now, if the shot on Zoe had been uh, a foot higher, she'd be dead. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, you know, no, no one's particularly caring. No, you know? no. Um, so yeah, I mean, t- to me, I always like to leave that nice and open. I know that some people like to be super serious. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I I like to be light hearted. What about um, accessibility? From the point of view that maybe people who are listening have said, well, look, I've tried the idea of kind of some kind of um, almost like a space opera type game where it's almost like a a combination of some of my favourite things, like, say, Firefly, and there's even hints of maybe even Battlestar Galactica in there. There is a little, yeah. I mean, the the entire concept is like uh, an alien fleet. I actually describe it as an evil Battlestar Galactica. You know, they're they're looking for Earth for revenge. Um, In terms of accessibility, because that is something that people do pipe up about, it's like I'd like to get involved in a role-playing game, um, but I'm finding it difficult to kind of get get this kind of run how how accessible have you made it for people that are maybe starting out in role playing games to kind of jump in and play so people who are starting out in role playing games um i would like to you know say to you guys um i have run era d10 with first timers with veterans um and with everything in between um, mm-hmm. I run it a lot at MCM Comic Con, which I'm sure you can imagine as a comic convention rather than a role playing convention does not, you know, is not overflowing with experienced role players. I, I run it with many, many people who this is their first ever role playing game, mm-hmm. and you know, I've had people buy it and go away and play it after playing it just once uh, with us at a convention where usually we don't even explain all of the rules, and it it is. I am one of the reasons I am so proud of the Era D10 rule set as a rule set is that it is so accessible. Now, um, I personally feel that the same applies to Fate. Um, I feel that Fate is maybe a little less specific in the way it works, which can lead to confusion. Yeah, that's one of the reasons that I don't play Fate super often, but I do play it. Um, but if you are worried about a first time game, I can only say that, you know, I've played this with hundreds of first timers and I've never really had anyone disappointed in playing or not understanding what they were doing. Um, I can also say that we actually do have a Facebook group where we offer advice and help to anyone who is unsure how to play the game. Oh, there you go. So that's pretty cool. So, um... Eleven days to go. Yep. Almost at the almost at the target. You sound as usual quietly confident as always, Mister Jowett. <laughs> um, if people want to know more, obviously we're going to put the um, the Kickstarter link in the show notes, so we have notes to show. But where can people kind of, in general, kind of find out more about yourselves and the you know the current game? Uh, so you can find out a lot more about Shades of Vengeance either on our website, uh, www.shadesofvengeance.com, which I'm uh-huh. sure Richard will also put in the uh, in the show notes. As always, you know I will. <laughs> um, you can also find us on Facebook, um, mm-hmm. and feel free to reach out to us. I mean, post on the page or drop us a message. I keep a really close eye on Facebook um, for the company, um, so it'll be me that you're talking to, almost certainly. That's pretty good. Um, cool. And uh, uh, really, those are the two best places. Um, you can find a lot on the website. Also, 
I can't recommend anything more than, you know, really looking through our Kickstarter records. You know, this is our 17th project on uh, on this account. Um, we've done... Uh, we've also got a comics uh, Kickstarter account, and there's actually one running right now called uh, Violet, which oh, is a okay. superhero comic about a cosplayer. Super-powered cosplayer. So, yes. um, you know, that's, that's a lovely little concept. Um... And way more to come on the comics, I should say. You'll have uh, and, to um, um, you'll have to ping us <clears throat> the link for that as well, so we can put that in there too. I'll be more than happy to send that over. Yeah. Um, cool. um, but yeah, I mean, if you if you look at our our you know our campaigns in general, um, we've run seventeen on on this account. I've run three under uh, helping other people get their games out there. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually on something like my twenty fourth um, project. At the moment, um, and uh, I, you know, uh, uh, twenty-three of those twenty-four have been funded. So, uh, you know, you say I'm quietly confident. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident. <laughs> I, I've Fair done cool. this enough that I, I have a decent idea of how this is going to look. Yeah. Um, I didn't know how Fate and Savage Worlds were going to go. That's a new thing. And to anyone out there who's a Fate or Savage Worlds fan, I hope that you feel that we're, you know, we're, we're catering towards what you want. Um, We've got a great guy uh, called Dave Bluer on uh, Savage Worlds, who's probably best known for Tormented Skies. All right. um, Which I'm told is quite quite famous in Savage Worlds circles. Um, I I know very little about Savage Worlds, hands in the air. Um, (laughs) I know very little about it, uh, and Dave has come on board to make sure that, you know, we we give it the proper Savage Worlds feel while keeping the, the era Balam feel as well. Yeah. Um and in terms of fate as I said a little while ago, you know, I've I've run a large number of fate uh fate sessions now. And um you know, I'm very confident that I can I can make something that you guys are going to like. I've also got uh, the assistance of someone who's uh working on the Infinity project for Medifius. Um who is also experienced in fate. I'm I'm not sure I can divulge his name yet. Okay. Um, but he's literally just signed up to say that he would very happily give us a hand uh, to make sure that the fate stuff, you know, a second pair of eyes, uh, to make sure that fate stuff, you know, is is fate as everyone else would understand it too. So yes, um, I'm you know I'm trying to make sure that everyone can play this game or as many people as possible. I'm surprised you've got time to sleep, Ed. To be perfectly <laughs> honest, sleep is for the dead. <laughs> sleep is for the dead. <laughs> Um, what we'll do is, um, this is not the last you're going to hear of Ed, because Ed is going to be coming back on the show, um, he's going to come back in late November, early December time. Uh, late um, October, early November. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we're going to have another chat then, and, um, get him on properly, and really, really catch up and find out what he's been playing, but this has just been a, a kind of a quick start on the kickstart. If you have heard... And what you have heard has made you piqued your interest, or made you intrigued, or potentially made you um, think, oh, I'm actually going to jump on board. I like potentially flying a little starfighter around where I'm a character as well as the ship. That sounds really, really interesting to me. Check out the show notes, because we will make sure that all the important links are in there, so we have notes to show. And if Um, it doesn't pique your interest, (laughs) drop us a message on Facebook and tell us why. There you go. You don't get much better. You know, I mean, I, I, I like to cater to what people want. Yeah. You know, I, I'm building the games that, you know, people are really interested in when I talk to them about them. And, uh, you know, if, if you think that, you know, this doesn't suit you, but you can think of something that would, then uh, drop us a note. You know, um, you never know. Well, you've always got your hands on a keyboard ready to type. <laughs> Let's face oh, it. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> So as I say, we'll put the links in the notes uh, so everybody can check out. Yeah, jump on Kickstarter, check out Ed's campaign. Um, There'll be links there for you to have a look at. Um, And we'll be speaking to Ed again in the next couple of months for a proper sit-down and a proper chat. Um, But now, until the next time, it's time for us to say goodbye. So it's a goodbye from Ed. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. (laughs) And it is a goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe for all sixes. And as I say... Or tens if you're if you're playing Yerubala. You can say tens as well, Ed. That's perfectly <laughs> acceptable. 
Um, and as I say, if you fancy doing a little bit of Luke Skywalker, Firefly, or Battle, Battlestar Galactica action, then certainly check out what's uh, in Mr. Jowett's cupboard, because I heard it's very starfightery and very, very tasty indeed. But until the next time, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>